cloud rise. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? Good, good. It's not near as cold as last Sunday. It's a little cool. But I'd like to welcome everybody this morning. What a nice day. But before we get started, I want to open us in a word of prayer, and then we'll... I've got several announcements, and if I forget one, I'm sorry. How about that? So let us pray. If y'all would, let's, how about let's stand up and pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the blessing of life that you've given us. And Lord, right now I pray for your Holy Spirit to invade this place, Father, that you would, uh, we would know that we would have been in the presence of God. Father, I just ask that you'd watch over us as we go through this time of praise and worship and as we go into the service, Lord, that we would open our hearts to your word, Father. We would open our hearts to your word that we may be changed, Father. Lord, I just ask that you would watch over us and direct us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. I've got several announcements, and I'll kind of go through them. And like I said, uh, but the first thing I want to say most is, if you're a visitor here today, please hold your hand up, because you are very important to us. We have several down here. And we'll have some men. we got one right there. Beth, you're a visitor? Okay. So if you'll just continue to hold your hand in the air, some men will come by and they will give you a card. And would you please fill it out and give it to the ladies in the welcome booth? And they will give you a a bag of goodies. And there's some information about their church. And then Pastor Frankie will probably be sending you a card next week, right, brother? And you'll be getting a card from, from Frankie. But you are very important to us, and we thank you for coming today and, and being here with us. The next thing I need to so, uh, say is Miss Cindy is going to lead the charge on cleaning up the float next Sunday at 1 o'clock, correct? So if you'd like to help come clean up the float that they had in the parade, uh, please meet up here next Sunday at 1 o'clock and bring your wire cutters because you're going to need them. Uh, the men's conference, it's getting here fairly quickly. It's January the 22nd. Uh, There's tickets out there in the foyer if you'd like to buy one. They're $20 a piece. Uh, There's tickets out there, and there's going to be a meeting this Tuesday at 7 o'clock at Corsicana at the Corsicana Cowboy Church. Uh, Please remember that. The arena ministry. We're going to be changing some stuff, or we have changed some stuff on the arena ministry, and I'm very excited about it because we need a purpose, we need a vision, and we need a plan. See, if you don't have a purpose for what you're doing, we're just adding another thing. 
But so, so when you come to us, the leadership, and say, I want to do something, that's the first question you're going to get. What's your purpose? What's your vision? And what's your plan? See, when the Lord lays something on your heart to do something, He laid it on you. He didn't lay it on me. Because He's given me a purpose. I know what my purpose is. But if we'll start looking about the purpose, and my purpose is this, to be about the Father's business. Yes. It's not about roping. It's not about bucking bulls. It's not about any of that stuff. It's about being about my Father's business. So we need to start thinking about that. As we go into the arena of ministry, we've got to have a purpose, a vision, and a plan. Amen? So here's the way it's going to kind of go. Tuesday night, Frankie's going to start a Bible study, and it's going to be from 6 to 7. It'll be up here in the, in the church. Jared will be bucking bulls every Tuesday night from 7 to 9. Starting in February, and it'll be down at the arena we're going to get back to where we started. It's going to be in the arena. The devotional will be in the arena. And then on Thursday nights, we're going to rope from 7 to 9. Same thing. We're going to be out in the arena reaching the people that we have called to, been called to reach. So that's kind of the way it's going. If you have any questions, just find me, and I can, I'll try to answer your question. Uh, taking pictures for a directory. There's a... A table set up out in the foyer, so if you're not in the directory, please go out there. Renee will take your picture today and next Sunday, so she's set up, so please don't forget about that. And see what else do I have. I've got one other thing I want to share. And the Lord showed me this this morning. Being committed. How committed are we as Christians? See, some of us want to participate, but God don't want us to be participants. He wants us to be committed. Even in the tough times of our life, are you committed? When the road is very rocky and there's a mountain in front of you, do you stay committed? In Psalms, Psalms 37, 5, it says, Commit your ways to the Lord and trust in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Are you committed? And one other announcement, I about forgot it, and Terry Rhodes would be very mad at me because he made it big so I could read it. Starting in March, there's going to be every first Wednesday of the month through October, there will be an open ride. And if you're interested in an open ride, you can contact Terry Rhodes and he can tell you all about it. And uh, if there's no other announcements at this time, we may meet and greet. Thank you very much. Till sure oh, I'll fly away I'll fly away Oh glory I'll fly away When I die Hallelujah by and by Oh I'll fly away Now when the shadows of this life and grown oh, I'll fly away like a bird from prison bars has flown oh I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die by and by, oh, I'll fly away. Play it.
just a few more weary days and then oh I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end oh I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by oh I one more time. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. <coughs> when I die, hallelujah, by and by, oh, I'll fly away. Now when I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away Oh yes, I'll fly away All right Something we started last Sunday And I've been asked to do it every Sunday If you don't mind, take a seat for just one second Because I've got to I've got to kind of call you out a little bit So how many people here today are, had a birthday? Is there any birthdays in the house? If you don't mind, if you'll stand up. If you've had a birthday, stand up. All the rest of you people, sit down. All right. All right, how many, how many anniversaries? Wedding anniversaries. Anybody, any wedding anniversaries? If you do, stand up, because I can't. All right. We had one birthday, correct? Maybe more? More, okay. All right. On the count of three, everybody holler happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday. All right. And I hope you do have a happy birthday. Today, I've asked Nick, uh, Mick to sing a song that uh, he's singing this song called Stroll Over Heaven. And I want to tell you something. Uh, so many of us this past year have lost loved ones. And if, if your loved one was was not prepared to meet God, it's a sad thing. But I'm going to tell you something. If they went into eternity knowing God and knowing who their Redeemer was, it's a, there's going to be a great reunion someday. Amen? You believe that? One of these days we're going to stroll over heaven with all those who have gone on before us. And what a blessed time that's going to be. It's going to be great. And uh, me and Corbin was coming to church this morning, and he was talking about, Deal pickles. He said, I need to get Nani to make me some deal pickles. I said, well, I don't know if you're going to get that done or not. <laughs> he said, well, she is my Nani, ain't she? <laughs> but he remembers my mom and the deal pickles. She used to do canning and make deal pickles. And I'm going to tell you something. I told him, I said, you know, all the time growing up, you think about stuff and you take for granted that someday it may not be here. So I want to just challenge you today. For those of you who have loved ones that you care about, let them know you care about them. Be thankful for the little things, because I'm telling you, when they're gone, you'll miss it. And there ain't a day goes by that I don't miss my loved ones that have gone on, especially this year. I see my dad everywhere I look on my place, and, and I miss him dearly. But I'm going to tell you, one of these days, heaven is going to be sweet, and I will stroll over heaven with him some fine day. <laughs> If I survey all the good things to me in my life And I feel granted of Gonna stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all our troubles and hearts have vanished away. Then we'll share all the beauty where all things are new. We're gonna stroll over heaven with you.
many places of beauty long to share here below time and treasures have kept us making plans as you know the morning of the rapture together we'll stand anew while I stroll over heaven with you gonna stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all our troubles and heartaches have vanished away then we'll share all the beauty where all things are new gonna stroll over heaven with you gonna stroll over heaven with you Jody's covering on drums day many of you know that uh, Memphis's dad passed away and so he's spending the day with his family which he should be doing but uh, anyway we uh, we had Jody come over and cover on drums day and I want to do this song that I wrote I wrote this back when I was playing with Jody and them years ago he was the first person to play this for me in fact the band at that time was the first ones to play it so uh, I want to do the child of the king for you today <laughs> My hair may be a little long What they say I say all wrong That's not really who I am The words I write they have no rhyme When I play I'm usually out of time that's not really who I am Oh, I'm a child of the King I've been washed by the blood No longer the man that I once was When you look at me You may not like what you see But I'm a child of the King I let my temper get the best of me And I say things I really don't mean I laugh and cut up way too much Sometimes I come across this rug That's not really who I am Oh, I'm a child of the king I've been washed by the blood No longer the man that I once was When you look at me You may not like what you see But I'm a child of the King I'm a child of the king I've been washed by the blood No longer the man that I once was When you look at me You may not like what you see But I'm a child of the king Oh, I'm a child of the king I've been washed by the blood No longer the man that I once was When you look at me You may not like what you see But I'm a child of the King
All right, we're going to calm it down a little bit, I promise you. <laughs> now, if any of y'all couldn't hear that, we will pray for you down here in the front. Just, just saying. All right. I want to sing this next song. It's called All My Hope. And folks, I want to tell you something. If you're here today, we've entered a new year, a new season, a new time. Still got the same president, but we're in a new season in our lives. It ain't, all, it ain't all that good, but it can be good. Amen? But I want you today, there's a lot of people in this world. I hope everybody's coming to this church has hope in Jesus. Amen. But folks, when we go outside the doors of this church, we meet people every day who have no hope. They see a country that's falling apart. They see a political system that ain't working for them anymore. And they see a lot of things in the world. They, they have a fear of COVID, fear of things happening to them. And folks, a lot of people have lost their hope. But folks within us should live that hope. Within us should, should be that hope that we can share with them that we have that's a reality. And I want you today if, to think about the words of this song. Think about where God has brought you from. And the hope that you now have in Jesus. And folks, we have an obligation to share that with everybody that we meet. Those who have little hope. Those who don't know where they're going next and what tomorrow's going to hold. Share them about the hope they can have in Jesus. held by the Savior and I fell fire from above and I've been down to the river oh yes I have and I ain't the same a prodigal return All my hope is in Jesus well, Thank God my yesterday's gone All my sins are forgiven and I've been washed by the blood Now I'm no stranger to the prison And I've worn shackles and chains Oh, but I'm freed and forgiven. Oh, yes, I am. And I'm not going back. No, I'll never, never be the same. That's why I can sing this. All my hope is in Jesus. Well, thank God my yesterday's gone. or forgiven and I've been washed by the blood now there's a kind of thing that just breaks a man breaks him right down to his knees God, I've been broken more than a time or two. Oh, yes, I have. But then you picked me up. You showed me what it means to be a man. Come on and sing it with us. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. Forgiven, oh yes, 
And I've been washed by the blood Can we give God a hand clap of praise this morning? He is worthy. He is worthy of all our praise. Amen. Uh, this, uh, I'm going to add a little bit to Rod's announcements uh, because this coming Tuesday at 6 o'clock on Tuesday night, we will have a Bible study. We're going to I'm going to do an introduction to the book of James this Tuesday night, and I'm on uh, Mr. Leon Watson. We'll start next, next Tuesday, the following week, and lead us in a Bible study in the book of James. And uh, if there is one book that we could walk out as believers in Christ and followers of Christ, and if we could get one book right, it'd be the book of James. There's so much in it, and we're, we're going to be breaking this thing down, and I want to encourage you, if you need to grow in your relationship with Jesus, there's more to being saved than just saying a prayer, okay? I want you to get that. There's more to being saved than just asking for some forgiveness for what you've done in the past, but it's another thing to get up and change. God brings change to our life, Amen. So uh, Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, we're going to go from 6 to 7, and then on the 1st, the arena, 1st of February, the arena events will start back up. So uh, then on uh, next Sunday, next Sunday night at 5 o'clock, our couples class will start. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet on the white table between the two doors. There's also a sign-up sheet out there if you'd like to have your child dedicated to the Lord, we're, we're signing up for that, and our dedication is going to be on what day? I'm looking for some, Miss Elizabeth, is, when is it? The 13th. the 13th, we're going to do a baby dedication. So if you want your child dedicated to the Lord, uh, please, February 13th. February 13th, okay. And uh, so we want to sign up right there, so please, uh, it's on, again, that's on the white table as well. So this morning, as we get started in the Word, I want to pray and uh, that God would open our, our ears and anoint my mouth. Let's, let's go. Father, we love you. I want to thank you for your love and your Word. And God, I pray that every one of us as believers, maybe we're walking in a place in, of uncertainty. God, I pray today that we could be refreshed, renewed, and be certain of who we are in Christ Jesus. And just like the song says, all my hope is in Jesus. God, that we'd learn to trust you more than ever before. I pray you would birth your word, your purpose, and your, your reason for our living in our life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you would bless this word today to the hearers. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Last week we talked about being a doer of the word and not a forgetful hearer. You remember that? Or have you done forgot? <laughs> uh, you know, there's a old saying, if we keep on doing what we've always done, we'll always get what we've always got. And what we do in, in our life as a Christian, we, we, we want to go by things I've done. I've done that. It, it, it's, it's like a check-off list. But there's no way to check off what you do for God. Because God done for you and me what we can't do for ourselves. Because he sent his son to pay that price for us. And then when we receive Jesus, God don't see. Here, here's the good thing. We can look at our life and we can go, man, I don't like what I see. That's what the book of James is. The book of James talks about it being a mirror. His word is a mirror. And I look in that mirror and if I don't like what I see, I can change that. Some folks stand in front, front of a mirror, primp, 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 and work, and teenagers, they'll wear a mirror out. You know what? I mean, for hours, got to be just right. But what about our spiritual life? If we say we're a child of God, does our life reflect that? We don't have to tell anybody we're a Christian. Our life should just reflect Him. By what we do in our life. Because change happens. That's what happens when you see the clothes you have on. You don't like them. What do you do? You change them. My wife says, you ain't wearing that shirt again, are you? I'm like, yeah. It's my favorite shirt. She said, well, it's got a hole in the elbow of it. I said, well, that just means I wore it a lot. She says, yeah, I'm going to throw it away when you take it off. And I'm going, man, she, she's wanting to change me. She don't like my shirt. I love my, you, you, get, you get that pair of jeans or them pair of shoes that you like that they're just right. There's one thing you hate to do is break in a pair of shoes, right? But what about our life? If we we want to think it's what we have to do. We don't like what we see. But God don't look at you. He sees his son that covers you. He don't see you. But we got to know we're walking in that relationship with Jesus as we go forward. The problem with Christians in America is that for too many, their lives never change. A sure thing, answer this question to yourself. I want to ask you this one. If you're a note taker, please write down your answer to yourself. Since you gave your life to Jesus, do you still do the things that you know were wrong in your life? Before you met Jesus, do you still do them? If your answer is yes, then what makes God so great? Why is God so great if change never comes about? How can you convince people that God is good if change never happened in your life? You see, what when, when we receive God and we really get a touch from God and God really does something in our life, I'm going to tell you what begins to happen. I can say this from my personal experience. You want to change. You don't want to do. You don't want to be who you used to be. Paul even writes it in the book of Romans. The old man is dead. The things I used to do become just that. They become the past. But if, if we never taste that and we never experience the greatness of God, then how can we convince other people that God is so great? Again, if you keep on doing what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. The definition, definition of insanity is to uh, keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. We can't tell God how great of a Christian we are. We walk out that life. God knows who we are. That's why he walked in the... Think about it. When, when he walked in the garden, when Adam and Eve had failed, they're putting them fig leaves together and they're trying to hide themselves. And God came and he says, Adam, where are you? 
Now, here's an all-knowing God asking Adam, where are you? Do you really think God didn't know where Adam was? He knew exactly where Adam was. He knew the exact moment Adam and Eve failed him. He knew that. But what God was doing with Adam was giving him a chance to confess where he was. I wonder if Adam had to just turned to God and said, we failed you. I wonder how different things would have been from that point in the word forward. But Adam started the blame game. Have you ever blamed anybody else for your wrongdoing? Huh? Have you ever blamed anybody else for your wrongdoing? Because here goes Adam. That woman you give me, ain't that just like a man? Golly. That woman you give me, she, she, she's the one did it. And then he turns to Eve. She said, hey, the serpent. There was no responsibility. What we're living in in America today is in a generation with no responsibility. We have even watched it creep off in the church where there's no responsibility, but I'm a Christian. But if our life never changes and the God of glory never brings that change to our life, you don't change. God's conviction will work on you to change who you are. I used to wear some shirts that I really liked. My wife is looking through the closet and us moving and my wife says, what about this shirt? You ain't wore it in a long time. And I said, well, I just ain't. And I, I look at it, and I'm, I've never said it out loud in my out loud voice, but I'm like, I love that shirt. But it don't fit me no more. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, yes, I'm going to tell. <laughs> I promise. So my wife says, to me the other night, she says, and when you try on clothes that you know don't fit you no more, you don't want nobody in the room. <laughs> I'm just being honest about me. And I said, my wife says, here, try it on. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm busy right. And she says, Frankie, try this shirt on. And I put it on and the buttons, they meet about right here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it shrunk. <laughs> I'm not being responsible. I'm, I've not gained any weight. I had a friend of mine. He's uh, Jerome Davis. His daddy was bent over in his britches is way back here, and he's been over there working, and this lady is going, oh, my Lord. Oh, at the feed store he ran, and Mr. Carson stood up, and he was a character. He stood up, and he pulls his pants up. He says, look, lady, I'm wearing the same britches I wore in high school. Just a little bit further down than what I wore them in high school. So my wife tells me that shirt. She said, it don't fit no more. I said, it's okay. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to change. No, I'm not. <laughs> Y'all feed me too much around here. There, there's buttermilk pies, there's, there's jelly, there's, there's all this stuff y'all keep bringing to me, and I, I got to do something with it. So I'm not going to change, I'm going to keep on eating. I may just eat it in smaller doses. Instead of eating a whole jar of peanut butter, maybe I can just do a spoonful at the time. But my wife, yeah, you doubt that, don't you? But my wife says, we're going to get rid of that shirt. And I'm going, but I love that shirt. Well, there's no need just looking at it hang around here. And she's right. But our life has to, our life, what did you say? <laughs> I'm about to get in the anointing. What did you say? Yes, yes dear. <laughs> I hear you. We'll continue this conversation at home. <laughs> <laughs> We may need marriage counseling after this thing. Though. <clears throat> mm. But I, guys, what I want, why, am I, why am I harping on this? Well, you can't live a life, and I'm going to say this boldly. You cannot live a life to Jesus that didn't change. 
You cannot live a life your way and tell God you changed or try to convince him that you've changed. That's what Adam and Eve done in the garden. It's what I've done with my wife. I'm trying to convince her, and I do. I love that shirt, but I'm not going to wear it again. Some of you thin young'uns, come see me. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Laurie, this is an A conversation. Be quiet and see your way out. Okay? <laughs> I love you, dear. I love Is there a counselor in the house? <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So here we're going to get into the Word now. All right, Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Now, this is what starts happening in our life. Watch what he says here in verse 6. Let him who is taught the Word, everybody say the Word, the Word is what is, is so important to you and me. Without the Word of God, there cannot be change. James describes this. When we read, when we read in here, you ever read in here and you go, Oh man, Tom needs to read this one. Becky needs to read. Becky is just this. Re- she, she t- ooh, if they could just read. It's not for them. You're not looking into their mirror. You're looking into the mirror of God, and you're, it's a mirror of your soul of what's going on. It is, you're reading about you, nothing. Let me tell you this, we need change. I need change as a person. He's not through working on me. I, yes, I'm your pastor, but he's not through working on me. He says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Watch verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. What, what, what's he saying? You can say you're one thing, and if you're not, you're a mockery to God. But God is not mocked. God knows who you are. And it's why conviction, does conviction Conviction don't just work until you say that little prayer. Conviction should be over our lives every day. Conviction should be what leads us in our everyday life. We should walk under conviction if we're wanting to be obedient to God. It's like mom and daddy telling you, you get with them boys and y'all get out there and go to driving fast. And if I hear you running up and down the road like that, I'm going to wear you out. It didn't stop me from doing it. I got in the car with him. He even went down there and I run over a skunk going to school one morning. And when I pulled up in the school parking lot and all the buddies is hanging out back there, I was in 11th grade and they smelled my Jeep. They ran as soon as I pulled up. Oh, man, what'd you do? And I said I ran over a skunk on my way to school. Come out around the mountain highway. Is he in the road? I said, yeah, he's in the road. So we stand around there and the story gets to building. And the dares begin to happen. And then they dare me, let's, let's go get that skunk and take him and th- throw him in Mr. Crowder's classroom. I'm telling you the truth, y'all. So I'm like, okay. But I'm not hauling him in my Jeep. My Jeep stinks bad enough. Ken Cash said, I'll drive. He had a 66 Impala. Baby blue. 66 Impala, there's a half acre of hood on that car. And when that thing's running down the road at 120 mile an hour, it floats. Ask me how I know, because I was in it. We went to Bilo, that was the grocery store back in my hometown. We went to Bilo, I got two grocery bags, and we double bagged it, because I was a bag boy at Bilo. We took two bags, and we went and got that skunk and a rubber glove. I put it in the bag, rolled it up. Put it in the trunk, shut the trunk, and we was running 120 mile an hour trying to outrun the smell. <laughs> you can't do that. Had all four windows down. 
run him back to the schoolhouse. I throwed him in the schoolhouse in Mr. Crowder's classroom. I got a five-day vacation for that. <clears throat> so it don't stop you when you're warned and mama said don't do it didn't stop you from doing it the word of God is a lamp to our feet it's a light to our pathway he said do not be deceived God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that will he also reap then we look at our life and we go man if God And we get mad at God because we're a Christian, but we want to be a Christian our way instead of God's way. We don't want to follow God's rule for our life because surrendering to God is surrendering your will. I had a mom and daddy. I still have a mom and daddy. Who's... Uh, my mom and dad is this way. It ain't who's going to whip you, it's who's going first. That's the way it was at my house. There was no mercy. And, and I'm thankful I had that because it's kept me, the Word of God says, train them up in the way they should go. When they're old, they'll not depart from it. Let me tell you something. If I don't tell you as a pastor that your life changes when you receive Jesus. You hear me? Your life changes when you receive Jesus. You don't do it his way and tell him how good of a person you are. You surrender to him. You surrender to his authority and you begin to follow his rule for your life. He said, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever, whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For if he sows to the flesh, he will of the flesh reap corruption. Let me give you the definition of flesh according to Hebrew and Greek studies. Flesh is, an, in, is a, craving for, a craving for sin with enticement. It craves it. The Bible says that, we, that our flesh... Is It came from the dust of the earth, and dust it's going to return. But it is our soul that is going to inherit everlasting life. Or we're going to enter into an eternity, uh, eternity, either a devil's hell. Oh, we don't want to hear about that one. Well, let me tell you something. If we don't surrender to the will of the Father, there's a devil's hell that is waiting for you. And if we surrender to the will of the Father, there's everlasting life, joy, peace, no, no more suffering, no more tears to dim the eye. We're going to walk on streets of pure gold. What man works for here and strives for here, working for that gold and all, all I can have, we're going to walk on it. it don't, we're going to walk on it when we get to heaven. And what we, gotta, we have to learn is, we have to surrender to God. We don't want to think about that part. <clears throat> but he says, he says, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart. But the reason we lose heart is because God, we want God to do something for us. We pray a prayer. God don't answer the prayer we, the way we think he ought to answer it. So we just kind of give up, get mad at God. You ever been there? Well, God didn't answer that prayer, and I'm, I'm a little frustrated with him. It's okay to be frustrated with God. But, but what we have to do is look into his word and see, am I frustrated because I'm of my way? He said to pray bold prayers to him. We need to go to the Father boldly, but when we don't walk in conviction and we don't walk as a follower of Him, it's hard to go to Him boldly. It's why we come to church and we're quiet. It's why we come to church and we say, He's walking on my toes. God ain't dealing with your feet. He's aiming at your heart. Let Him change it. <clears throat> he said in verse 10 again, He says, Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all, to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. Now I want you to flip with me over here to Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, Simon, this is before Peter became a follower of Jesus. But we're going to see what Peter, when Jesus is, is teaching them right here in verse 1, I want you to watch this. Verse 1, chapter 5. 
So it was that so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. What did it say back over here? There's that word word again. He said over here, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Now, bam. Chapter 5, verse 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that they stood by the lake Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now watch what Simon does. Simon knew one thing, how to fish. Never have we read to this point that Jesus was a fisherman. Ne never. But Simon w knew one thing, and he knew how to fish. That's what he did for a living. It's who he was. But watch what he says here. Jesus asked him to launch out a little further, and then in verse 5 it says, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. He was frustrated. He was frustrated that, man, we, we, I'm, I, right now I've, I've been throwing these nets all night long, and now I just want to go home. We've, we've done this all night, and we ain't caught nothing, and we know this, that once that sun comes up, that they don't bite as good. Or we can't, they don't do as good. So anyway, here's what he says. He says, but Simon answered him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. If we would learn to follow the word of God, we would begin to see great things in our life. If we would begin to do what God has asked us to do instead of telling God what kind of a Christian we are and start living the life he wants you to live instead of the one I want to live. Great things will begin to happen in your life. There has to be some responsibility come to the believer. Verse 6. And it says, and when, they had, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled the boats so that, so that they, were, they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. He fell at his knees. What, did, what does that say to you? He bowed before him. Until we learn to bow before him more than one time, Here's a man that knows how to fish. He knew how to fish. And now he's going to listen to this Jesus. You think you know how to live your life. But you've been jacking it all up. You don't see the promises of God. You don't see the greatness of God until you begin to bow to the Father. Until you begin to bow to Him and cry out to Him. It's more than just reading His Word. We have to call on Him for direction, for correction, for the ability to change in our life. You cannot change on your own. The Holy Spirit has to be what's guiding you into the change that happens in your life. Give God a hand clap of praise in this place. <clears throat> and he said, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John and the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. This is what happens in our life. We come to church and we're afraid to pray because somebody will think something's wrong with me. There ain't nothing wrong with me. I have to say this as a pastor. There's something wrong when I see you can't pray. Is that okay for me to say that to you? It scares me when you can't pray. Well, come, man, you got to pray for me. I, I, I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. But there is no prayer that I can pray for you that will seal your destiny in Jesus. Only you can do that. 
There is no prayer that I can pray for you that will seal your destiny in Jesus. Only you can pray that. I'm going to say it again. There is no prayer that I can pray for you that will seal your destiny. God sees my heart. God sees also your heart. And if your heart is not in tune with God's heart, the prayer I pray for you is, all I can pray is for more conviction. Correct them, bring them to a place, oh God. Bring them to a place where they, where they want to follow you. And he said, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Simon knew how to fish. But now Jesus is turning him into a fisher of men. And what needs to happen with not just living for the brand cowboy church, but every church in America, fishers and men need to walk out this door knowing that they've got the right bait to share with people that want to follow Jesus. That there is a hope. I, I used to, I lived in South Carolina, and we'd go to Myrtle Beach every summer for our family vacation. We'd go down there and as a little kid, I, I bought one of, me, one of them goggles that you put on and you can see under the water. And I'd get me them goggles and you go down there and you put them goggles on and I go underwater, I can't see my hand right here. That water's so murky in the ocean. Never, snorkeling, snorkel, 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 snorkel. Me and my wife get married, we go to Hawaii on our honeymoon. And when we got over there, this, uh, everybody's talking about snorkeling, snorkeling, snorkeling. Oh, you got to snorkel? You got to go snorkeling. You been snorkeling? No, I did when I was a kid. Oh, you got to go snorkeling here. Okay, what's the difference in can't see your hand here and can't see your hand in Hawaii too? The man says, oh no. Said, there's orange fish down there that long. I said, really? He got my attention. He said, man, they're swimming right in front of you. Orange fish, blue fish, yellow fish. I said, really? I said, where at? He said, right there. Just, just right there. I said, you're talking about right there. He said, I'm telling you, right there. So I go up there, and I rent me one of them snorkel kits. And I go down there, and I'm like, okay. Because when I snorkeled when I was a kid from this little to teenage years, all you can see hand in front of your face. Never seen no fish. See some nasty old seaweed come floating by and it was right there. It's the only way you could see it. Get caught on your goggles, you come up and got look like a monster coming out of there. So I go under. I get, I'm, I'm in water this deep, and I go under, and I swim. I went under, and I'm snorkeling, breathing out that little tube, and I swam maybe 20 feet, and there was this orange fish. And I come up, and I went, hey! I'm, with as loud as I could yell, I said, this fish is beautiful, man. It's awesome. This old boy sitting over at his table. He said, I told you they're there. He said, go on out. He said, you'll see turtles and everything. From that point on, and I, I wanted to bring these pictures and show them to you on the big screen of what my snorkeling experience was because I became a professional in about eight days. I'm going to tell you this, it don't take eight days to experience greatness from God. And when God does that something great, you're going to want to share it. You don't even need to know their name. You just see somebody with a little bit of snorkel tube hanging on. What'd you see? Go, go, go swim in the coral. We, we were going under and there was coral tunnel, tunnels down there that you could, not, not long, but they'd be about eight foot long. You could swim right through them. It was so unbelievable. I got pictures of me swimming with sea turtles. I'm, I'm here, and, and the old boy that I was swimming with and snorkeling with, he's taking pictures of me, and there's a sea turtle between me and him. It was unbelievable how far we could see because the experience changed. The water changed. We wasn't on that Atlantic coast anymore. I was out in, in, on the Pacific side of things and the water was crystal clear. But what we got to do, we've, we've walked around with Jesus in the shallow long enough and it's time to launch out to the deep. God is calling us to a deeper relationship with Him. He's calling us to get out. He's calling us to move from where you want to be, get what, to where I, what I have for you and where I want you to be. 
when you get there, when God begins to do great things in your life, you're not going to be quiet about it. You're not going to just be a Christian. You're not going to just go to church. You're going to become the church. You're going to begin to share the Word. Let him who is taught in the Word begin to teach him who is teaching. That's what the Word says. When we get to know this Word, when we get to know this Savior, when He really becomes our Lord, when He becomes everything to us that He intends to be, you're going to want to share it. You know what else will happen? Gossip and will die. Why? We don't do that. <sighs> really? Gossiping will go by the wayside because now you've got something of quality to talk about. A relationship with Jesus. Exodus 15.2 says this. Exodus 15.2 says this, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Now I want to tell you what the word salvation means. Preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. When you can recognize these things that are in my life, I've got to stop. When you feel that conviction that I've got to quit this kind of lifestyle, and I'm just going to get plain with you, when it's okay to sit on the tailgate of a truck and drink with your buddies, then what's, how great is your God? When it's okay to just cuss and tell dirty jokes with your buddies just because they do it and you just turn into the chameleon and fit the crowd you're in and there's no change about you. When, when there's never any change in your... I used to do the drinking. I used to do the dirty joke telling. But when he became great in me, when he became great to me, I wanted to get away from that stuff. I didn't want it to be part of me anymore. And my buddies began to make fun of me. They began to, to, to ridicule me because of, oh, Frank, He's just going through a spell, but he'll be back. I was the life of the party. That was my title. He's the life of the party. When old Punkin Town gets over here, it'll be all, well, we're going we're gonna to have a time, but I quit showing up, and it stayed that way. And then about three years, three years of consistency, the ones that was ridiculing me started knocking on my door one by one. Man, I need you to pray for me. Why? Not because I browbeat them or fed them a loaf of bread, force feeding them. I didn't force feed. I just lived a life. And they begin to knock on my door and go, man, my life is upside down and I need what you got. Have you got to that place in your life? If you're not, you're missing out. You're snorkeling in the wrong water. I wanted so bad to bring him pictures to you this morning. Because change, when it happens, the, the, everything around you begins to change. You want to change. You want to glorify God. Worship is more than a song. Worship is... The, when we leave here... And, and, and life's getting tough for you. Maybe you got a family member that don't know how to trust God the way you do. Don't let that cause you not to trust. Huh? You know somebody in this room knows what I'm talking about in that. Somebody in this room's got a family member headed down a wrong avenue right now and, you, and, and it saddens your heart but it can't steal your joy because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And when he becomes great, let everybody say great. Do you remember the Frosted Flake commercial, Tony the Tiger? They're great. When God becomes great to you like that, you're going to make an exclamation point. That comment, they're great, made you want to go buy a box. Nobody wants nothing to do with Jesus in America today. Our political leaders want to wash him out. Get rid of him. Stop this church thing. Stop this Jesus thing. They tried that 2,000 years ago too. They hung him on a cross. 
But because he was so great, he rose again three days later. And what you may need to be experiencing right now, Christian, is a resurrection in your life. God wants to do great things in you, through you, for you, to you, with you. It's not, it's not this, what, what do you, look what you got to give up. Somebody said that to me, look what you got to give up. And I was walking out of the store when this old boy, look at all the things you got to give up. And I turned around and I said, give up? I said, when I had all of that garbage in my life, y'all don't know how miserable I was. I had to be the life of the party to suppress the depression that was in me. I had to drink the whiskey to seem like I was the good old boy. But inside I was hurting, man, just like you are. And when God brings that change, I ask him this. I said, go back? Go back to what? God, let me tell you this. You are not junk. Okay? You may feel like you are not worthy of God's blessing. I want you to tell you, I want to tell you that is a lie from the pits of hell. You are worthy of God's blessing because Jesus died on a cross. You can take it so personal, he died just for you. You can take it that personal. But what you got to do is surrender to God and get the junk out of your life. You are not junk, but you may have junk in your life. God wants to change that. <clears throat> Salvation is a source of means of being saved from human ruin or loss. Here's another definition. Deliverance from sin and its consequences. Reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. But if you sow into life, you will reap everlasting life. It is believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Christ. What is faith? It's what I believe in. Nobody is desperate to get out of here right now because you think my car may not start. I got to hurry and get out there and make sure it cranks while there's somebody here that can help me. Nobody's desperate like that. Is anybody desperate like that? Everybody's that confident. Not one hand went up. Everybody's that confident your car's going to start. But the moment it don't, we got to get help. I see a world needing help. I see a church needing help in America. And the help we need comes from Jesus. In Exodus 15, 2 again, it says this right here. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise Him. My, Father, my Father's God, and I will exalt Him. Have you been able to do that? I'm going to ask the band to come. Have you been able to do that? Have you been able to exalt the King Most High? Launch out to the deep. It's time to get deeper with God. Because that's what Jesus was teaching Peter, a lesson in life by what he done with fishing that God wanted to do in his life. And he would reach men. Simon became Peter, and we're going to be talking about that not somewhere down the line about what Peter means. The word Peter means. We're going to be talking about that at some point. But his name was Simon, who became Peter. And when Peter was martyred for Jesus, he said, I don't want to be hung like my Lord was hung. I want you to hang me upside down. I'm not worthy of being crucified like my Lord. Is he that great to you? Y'all stand with me. I'm going to ask our prayer warriors to come. 
I'm going to ask God to come and I'm going to ask you, what do you need in your life? If you want God to be great in your life, just all over this building, begin to come on. Begin to come on and let God begin. Come and receive from God. Expect from God. God wants to do some great things in your life. Begin to walk out right now. I need to surrender to God. I need more God. I want God to be great to me. I want to meet you down front here and I want to pray for you. I want to see the God of glory do some setting free in your life. And if you won't pray right where you are, if you won't come down front, I want to pray right now. Father, I love you. And I want to thank you for your love and your mercy that endures forever. I pray for your strength in our life, mighty God. I ask, Lord, that you would move in our hearts right now to get us into a deeper place with you, a deeper understanding of you. And God, I pray you use our lives for your glory. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. And God, I pray that you help us right now as a people, as in our families, that you would help us, oh God, in this time right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Miss Rebecca, give me a little more volume. <clears throat> so, I want to ask you, are you happy where you are? Launch out into a deeper place with Jesus. I'm going to ask my buddy George to come on, man. I want to pray for him. He's got to have surgery in the morning. He's going to do some stents in his heart. And I want to pray over George. <clears throat> come on, Rod Todd. We're going to pray for this young man. Just as I am without one plea, but that the blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. Can you hear me? There we go. There we are. Guys, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you. Let me share this with you. Next Sunday on our um, Sunday night with our couples class, child care will be provided. So if you have children, come on, sign up sheets on the white table. My little wife will be there signing up. I want to pray and we're going to dismiss. Can everybody say on the count of three, praise the Lord, one, two, three. And I just pray you lift him high this week. Find that place in your life and launch out to the deep and let God strengthen your relationship for his kingdom's sake. Let's pray. God, I love you. I pray your abundant blessing of provision over this house. 
I pray for these families, God, that you would strengthen them for your kingdom's sake. I pray you use them, God, keep them safe in their travels and on their job this week. And I just pray that, Lord, you would uh, lighten the loads of stress and re replace it with your joy. I pray your blessing over them, God, and keep us safe and bring us back here together to worship you, call on you, and be directed by you. You're a great God and worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. There may be a little on what I say, I say you're wrong. That's not really who I am. The words I write, they have no rhyme. When I play, I'm usually out of time. That's not really who I am. I'm a child of the King, been washed by the blood. No longer the man that I once was When you look at me You may not like what you see But I'm a child of the key Sometimes I let my temper Get the best of me I say things I really don't mean I laugh and cut up way too much Sometimes I come across as rough That's not really who I am I'm a child of the King I've been washed by the blood no longer the man that I once was When you look at me You may not like what you see But I'm a child of the King Oh, I'm a child of the King I've been washed by the blood No longer the man that I once was When you look at me you may not like what you see But I'm a child of the King Oh, I'm a child of the King I've been washed by the blood No longer the man that I once was Oh, when you look at me You may not like what you see But I'm a child of the King 